Hoping to have more success satisfying the dragon's thirst for investment is Glasgow mum Victoria Fullerton, with a creation she believes is a game changer for new parents. I think we've got something special here. It's a good product and it fills the last gap in the market. This looks interesting. Tuka, you've got some baby products, haven't you? This could be right up your street. Uh, I'll have you know, I'm in the baby space as well now. This is basically Tuka versus Sara. It absolutely isn't. Ooh, Deborah's throwing her hat in the ring as well. It's heating up already. The entrepreneur has had a willing assistant at home, helping to put the product through its paces. My daughter has been a big part of it, and due to the nature of the product, she has been number one tester for it as well. When I left the house, she just said, bring back a dragon. <laughs> Hi, dragons. My name is Victoria Fullerton, and I'm the owner and creator of The Total. We're a pre-trading company seeking investment, and I'm here today to ask for £150,000 in exchange for 20% equity in The Total Sleep Company. Research shows lots of parents are perpetually tired as their children don't sleep properly. The Toto is a wearable device that I have created for infants that will give parents and caregivers the upper hand when it comes to bedtime. The Toto is worn on the child's wrist and uses their own unique biometrics. It then runs our patent pending technology and this suggests times when the child is tired and when would be best suited for them to start their bedtime routine. And here we have the Toto Sleep app which we input some of our users' information and our child's information. And then all we have to do is sync up our phone and wait for our notifications. And this greatly optimises your chances at a successful bedtime. So, Dragons, are you ready to get parents a total night's sleep? There's um, some devices in your boxes for you to take a look at, and I'm ready for any questions that you might have. A wearable device which predicts infant sleep patterns is the offering from Victoria Fullerton who's seeking £150,000 for 20% of her company. Dad of two, Tuka Suleiman, wants to know how Victoria dreamt up her idea. Well, every parent wants to put their baby to bed in peace. Yes. I always believe in my days when I had babies, routine. It's all about routine. Routine is absolutely... Routine is routine. very important. Now, you've come up with an app, so I want to know how did you actually develop the product? So my background is actually psychology and child development. Right, that's good. And on my sleep training journey with my own daughter, I came up with the hypothesis mm -hmm. that there's certain biometrics yep. that actually tell you the exact time when that child is susceptible to going to sleep. Some other monitors would take your heart rate and things like that. But our technology has pinpointing the exact moment that that child is tired. How does it do that? Tracking their biometrics. And what are those biometrics? That one's patent pending, um, it is protected. I'm quite nervous about just telling you the particular algorithm. But as an investor, I have to make my decision today whether I'm going to invest of in your course. business. So the, I have to understand what is unique and proprietary about this business. And from what I'm understanding, you're saying you can't tell me. I could tell you, I just wouldn't like to disclose that, so... If you're pat pending, you can speak freely. Pending. Yeah, well, you can speak because your application's in. The application is in. It's definitely in, well, then you can talk about it. Do you understand how it might be hard? Yes, I do. That's the bit of magic that you can't tell me about. It makes it really quite hard for me to get excited. I'm quite happy to speak kind of privately, one no. to one. It's just because it is protected, I would hate for a bigger company to come in and swoosh. So what we're looking to understand is, what is the inventive step? What is the technology that you've patented? What does it do? That's all I'm asking. She could explain what it does, but you're worried about explaining the technical algorithm. I'm not asking that. Couldn't be less interested. What does it do? So it's taking particular biometrics and it is tracking the pattern, so it's activity and rest periods. Think along the lines of oxygen rates or heart rates, things that your Fitbit would do, but there's a particular one that has not been connected just yet that I have. Victoria narrowly avoids disaster by relenting on keeping mum about her top secret tech. 
But Stephen Bartlett wants to find out a bit more about the team that's building her app. To get a product like this to market, the development costs are huge, right? Are you developing this in-house? I'm outsourcing it. Still that always strikes me as a, a risk. The problem is I'm investing in not just the concept, but the team of people that have written the code, but they're not even in the same building. It's OK, we work very closely with the guys, although it's outsourced because I don't, I don't write apps. What code are they developing it in? Um, so there's a few different ones that they're doing because obviously they're working with iOS and they're working with Android as well. I'm sorry, I'm not technical, I only know a little bit of it. You don't have to be technical, mm -hmm. but I want someone stood next to you that is. This isn't a baby psychology business, this is a tech company. Obviously, I would love to be employing my own team and that's why I'm here and hope to expand. But for now, this is how I'm keeping costs down, their salary. I think it comes back to bite you in the bum. When you invest in a tech company, you're investing in a set of talented developers that are building the code, and that's not what we're investing in here. We've got an entrepreneur who's found someone to build something. They're not part of the business. So I'm asking myself where the value is. A lack of in-house developers is a major red flag for tech-savvy Stephen Bartlett. And it appears Victoria's hardware isn't faring too well under a Peter Jones examination. Look, I think it's an interesting concept. I mean, when you first get the package, I could see without the manual and everything, and then when you take it apart, I realise that it have isn't. You, you've been fiddling with it, have you? I have been fiddling <laughs> with it. I have too. It's not hard, though. In fact, it mine fell apart when the silicone yeah, came and I think, I mean, what's interesting is that you are quite a long way, aren't you? I appreciate now this is just a prototype, so for concept. And I do agree with the wearable piece, there's no question. But I think the hardest component part to what you're doing is the software. One of the big concerns is the fact that I don't know what the code is. I would like to, you to have shared that. It's something I'd be able to come back to you with. We, we've got this I'm moment. <laughs> there's one opportunity in the den and sadly, you know, it's here and now. Sorry, Peter. It's not something I'm going to invest in, so sadly, I'm out. The first dragon drops out as Peter Jones puts the sleeping aid to bed. Has Tuka Suleiman been convinced by Victoria's vision for baby bedtime? I honestly believe that parents are not going to pay just to monitor sleep. Parents are now finding there's too much tech. Too many add-ons. I think it's more of a generational thing these days as well. Burn. No, that's not what I meant to go, sorry. Um, it's definitely a millennial thing. They want their Fitbit, they want their watch, they want everything now, you know, the self-gratification. Yeah, maybe, but I think the application that you're, you're going towards is going to be difficult. And you're going to need minimum a million pounds to make this a proper, proper business. So for that reason, it's not investable and I'm out. Um, Victoria, I worry that you don't know how far you are technically because it's a tech-based business. That's what it is. But it's that tech base that is going to make it happen or not. My worry is that you don't know how far you are from that. So I won't be investing. I'm out. Um, Victoria. It's just a huge risk. I've been there, I've worked developing apps in Silicon Valley myself. Super expensive. And so, you know, if I were to invest in this company, I'd basically need more than 100% mathematically. And obviously that's not possible. So as much as I applaud your ambition, this is a, a mountain too, too high to climb. And so for that reason, I'm out. The scale of ambition is too risky for Stephen Bartlett, and he becomes the fourth dragon to depart. The entrepreneur's hopes of investment now rely on the product resonating with Sarah Davies. I'm not the tech one. I am the mother who understands the problem. When I was a new mother, it was like a dark art. So I, I think it's absolutely genius. 
I do, however, appreciate the challenges that the other dragons talked about. Yes. And I'm not the tech expert, so I don't know and understand at what level you are through that development of the tech. We're ready to go. I'm going to trust that you are there. So from my point of view, I think you're on a great mission to want to help, and I just hope it's a mission that we can make a lot of money at along the way. So I would like to make you an offer. However, high risk, high reward. So I will offer you all of the money, but I would want 35% of the business. I would be quite happy with that, Sarah. We've got a deal? We've got a deal. We've got a deal. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It's a no-brainer for Victoria, who wastes no time in accepting Sarah Davies' offer. The baby entrepreneur leaves the den with the mother of all investors as her new bedfellow in business. Sarah being a mother, she knew exactly where I was coming from, so I'm really glad that she loves the product and she wants to come aboard with me. That was brave. Hmm? Not one person in your team can write one line of code. That feels like a challenge. But that's fine. <laughs> <laughs>